Hello my dear servers and welcome back to yet another episode of St. Robert's Day Game and Dating Podcast and this time we're going to be talking about using day game to start a relationship because the guys I usually work with can be divided into three groups. Group number one is guys that just want to have fun. They want to go out, day game, be with a bunch of women and just enjoy this wilder side of life. Group number two is the guys that want to find a wife and yesterday doesn't happen often. I tend to kind of not work with these guys because usually behind that urgent need, you know, this desperate need to find a girlfriend, there's, there's something behind that that I don't want to deal with. But the third group is the guys that want to have fun for a year or two. They want to work on improving their dating skills so that later, a year or two down the line, they can start a relationship with the girl they're actually like. And this group is the largest one by far. Men are tired of having no control over their dating life. They're used to dating women that already like them. They see a girl that likes them and then they simply have to decide, do I want to go out with her or not? But there is no way for them to date women they really like. And this is where day game comes in. If you learn to approach women in everyday situations, you can approach literally anyone and you can get laid. Obviously not with anyone, but with way more and higher quality women than before. This doesn't mean you can find a nice girlfriend if your life is a mess, but if you are someone who has his life more or less in order and you learn to approach women on everyday situation, then that opens so many opportunities. That's why now a lot of high value men have started learning day game. This is just another thing they've always wanted to improve their lives and they've decided, hey, I've done so many other things. Why not get the dating life I really want? I've been fortunate enough to coach some incredible men from whom I've learned so much about life, business, health, and other things. And when these guys learn to get laid, their options are incredible. Imagine a high-value guy who girls already want to be with, and then this guy learns to get laid. He can have the best of both worlds. He can have fun and, you know, enjoy himself. But then when he wants to start a relationship, it's very easy for him to do that with a woman he actually really likes. Well, okay, let's slowly start to get into this topic. For the last Last month, uh, we've been working on a topic of starting relationships in my private community and more specifically with a focus maybe a bit more on non-traditional relationships. Ideally, versions where you can sleep with other girls, but she isn't sleeping with other men, but also other options. And in this podcast episode, I want to share three clips that I took from content I created for the community. And we will look at first what the pickup world and also the day game world gets wrong about the relationships and why you shouldn't listen to pickup and day game coaches when it comes to relationship advice. Second, we will look at relationship math, kind of having realistic expectations of how much work does it actually take to become good at day game, good enough to start a relationship with a woman you really like. And third, six questions you should think about if you're thinking about starting a relationship from day game. Of course, we did a bunch more work on this topic in the private community. Most importantly, a specific piece of content where we went over how to have conversations with your future girlfriend about these non-traditional types of relationships. So if you want to check out the other content we did for this topic, you can sign up for the private community by clicking the link in the description below. I would say the topic of day game and relationships is the biggest thing I have changed my mind about in in this world after more than five years of coaching. Before we jump into these three clips, let's quickly run over the information about the coaching spots. I am right now still in Japan, but I'm heading back to Europe in two weeks. Uh, May is fully booked, but I'm available starting uh, June. I'm not announcing cities or any bootcamps or anything like that because I don't do group bootcamps. I usually hop on a call with any, everyone who wants coaching and then we get to know each other and then we decide which city would be the best idea for the student based based on you know, where he is in his day game, what type of women he likes, and we kind of look at, okay, does he need an easier city, a harder city, etc. So a bunch of spots uh, for the summer in Europe, and then in the autumn, I am heading back to Buenos Aires, Argentina. I already have a student booked for late October, so I'll be there for probably around a month. So if you're interested in learning day game with me in Europe, 
also USA or Argentina uh, this year, then check out the information about coaching in the link below. You'll find everything, how the coaching usually works, pricing, etc. And now let's finally jump into this topic. First, let's look at what the pickup and dating world gets wrong about relationships. So first, let's start with talking about this. At one point in your past, you probably realized that what everyone else is trying to do in the dating world, what all men are trying to do, just doesn't work. You know, the, the dating apps and, and being like a super polite, super nice gentleman and, and being the friend first and all the other nonsense. You realize that the classical dating advice is really wrong. It doesn't really work. And, and uh, you are starting to look for something something that works and you found day game you found day game coaches and you started getting late but now you are thinking okay you know at some point I do want to start a relationship but how many good examples of day game coaches who have successful relationships do you know several of my past students are in happy relationships right now and I even know some pretty hardcore PUAs from back in the day who right now are in happy loving relationships but the examples in this old school pickup world are few and far between. If you really look at the world of day game and the content that's out there and kind of the message that the, the content creators are trying to push, then you probably have already understood that most day game coaches aren't great examples when it comes to relationships. And let's be honest, life in general. When you look at the big names uh, that you know in the day game and old school pickup world, well, uh, Pay attention to where many of these guys, I wouldn't say most of these guys, end up sooner or later. You have a bunch of guys who end up with having some extreme political views. You have guys who are still peacocking when they are in their mid-60s doing crazy outfits and, and still coaching game. I'm talking about mystery, of course. An incredible guy, you know, kind of put this industry on the map and, and made it popular, but... What he's doing right now, it doesn't look that good anymore. You have several stories of suicides. We have the story of Tom Torero, but I've heard there are some cases uh, like that that have, have happened before. Uh, you have some guys who, well, they completely leave the dating world. They say all of that is terrible and they become very religious, uh, etc. So most of people from 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 the old school pickup world from the old school day game world they kind of end up in destinations where i'm pretty sure you don't want to end up so as we see, not a good track record, although there are plenty of guys who have turned out to be great dudes in their, you know, life after game. But most of the ones I know that are amazing dudes, they have left the industry and they aren't talking about their relationship experiences publicly anymore. But these are the guys who should actually be talking about it. Yeah, if you leave the world of, of whatever, or if, if you leave that and now you are in a beautiful relationship, I think it's weird to leave that thing in the past and not talk about, okay, this is what I used to believe, this is what I believe now, and, and kind of educate the guys that are in this kind of in the menosphere, in the old school pickup world, and show that there is a different view, there is a different kind of perspective you can have on this, but it's easier for these guys to, st to stay in the shadows, especially nowadays, when you have to be kind of careful what you're talking about publicly. But more and more, you know, cool, successful, accomplished guys are seeing day game as, as this thing where, okay, turns out online dating doesn't work and what the hell do we do now? And they see beautiful, amazing women around them and they see, wait, why can't I approach them? And all they have to do is overcome their fear and learn what to do and boom they can do that and they probably have done similar things in other fields in their life before maybe in business maybe in fitness etc so this is just another thing they want to learn in their life another fear to overcome and and they see this as a great way to achieve one of their biggest goals is to start a beautiful relationship i would even go as far as saying that maybe the old school pickup guys and the old school day gamers were sort of like the early adopters of of the model just as in bitcoin you know a lot of people doing scammy things were the early adapters and now it's become very mainstream where it's kind of understood by anyone accepted by most people and even accepted by the kind of the financial institutions and in the world of day game the old school pickup guys were the early adopters and now 
it's becoming more and more accepted in, I would say, general society, especially among fairly successful people. There are not many coaches, not many content creators who are talking about using their game to actually find a girlfriend, but there should be because that's what most men are eventually looking for. And that's why I like to talk about this topic uh, to show my perspective after I've done all the wild things and now see things a little bit different. But let's make this clear. I'm not a relationship expert. I'm good at sleeping with women and I know how to start relationships with them. But I can't teach what to do after that though. But as always, I'll share with you what has worked best for me and other guys I know. And also the mistakes I see even very good day gamers making when they're thinking about starting relationships. What the pickup world gets wrong about relationships. The PUA and the old school day game world is sort of like an information bubble where content creators keep pushing the same weird ideas, everyone keeps talking about the same talking points, everyone believes the same stuff, and if you say anything different, you will be labeled as blue pill. Or even purple pill. Purple pill was this idea introduced some several years ago where someone in the day game or PUA community would start talking about approaching uh, seduction in a b bit more ethical way. Uh, and then people say that, yeah, you know, he's not red pill, he's, he's just blue pill pretending to be red pill. It was an easy way to kind of dismiss someone, dismiss someone's ideas. And I'd be pro I would probably be the perfect guy to discredit by saying, Saint Robert is purple pill. And some of the beliefs and ideas being pushed and talked about in this kind of PUA world, in the red pill community, in, in the manosphere in general are, I'm just going to read them from my notes. Uh, you can't have successful relationships. That's a big one. Uh, women are hypergamous and will dump you if someone better comes available, you know. Uh, everyone cheats. It's just as in nature. It's just in our nature. Also a very popular belief. For example, we can also talk about the book by Richard Dawkins, Selfish G which there are a lot of good ideas about it, but guys take it to an extreme where, where we are who we are, we behave the way we behave because, because our genes make us behave that way. And because of this, we're all doomed. Everyone cheats because it's in our genes. Uh, of course, you have alpha and beta nonsense. That's com completely stupid. Like, think about it. Putin is a proper alpha male. Well, do you have to be an idiot like Putin to be successful in relationships? Obviously not. And of course, the belief that you always have to be in control, that frame is everything, even in relationships. Even though these beliefs are based on some legit ideas, but when taken to extreme, when taken to extreme, like you have to admit that they are toxic and they lead to toxic behavior. And I won't even start talking about the guys who are just, you know, commenting online, oh, she's a four, I would never do this, I would never do that, where, where these guys are not getting laid with anyone at all. For example, I have a beautiful, amazing, smart and feminine girlfriend, but when I did a podcast episode with her, the YouTube comments were just ridiculous. Okay, well, now that we've defined that the world of pickup and old school day game is full of all-knowing mega alpha men males who know everything about seduction and dating, let's talk about why you don't really have to worry about it at all and you can actually do much better than them. You are better. I started doing short 30 minute one on one calls with everyone who was thinking about joining our private community because I wanted to make sure that we are a community of amazing men and I don't really care about how much money you make, how cool of a dude you are, how great your social skills currently are, etc. And it doesn't really matter whether your goal is to sleep with a bunch of women or find a meaningful relationship. I care about what attitude men in our community have towards women. You're here to learn how to become great with women without all of that toxic nonsense. You're learning what works while not picking up the toxic habits. When it comes to starting a relationship, you're actually running laps around the average pickup guys. So keep learning from all the resources we have in the community from one-on-one -on -one or group coaching calls and ask any questions you have in the group chat. You have all the resources needed and whenever something's missing, just ask for it and I'll make it happen. That's why 
I created this community. Next, let's look at realistic expectations and how much work does it really take to start a beautiful relationship from day game. But first, to be honest, we should look at other methods and how realistic or how good they are for starting a relationship. Online dating, almost impossible for most men. Most of us have some experience online dating and unless you are really good looking and you're looking for a girl who is your own age or older, probably worse looking than you, like it's just not a good idea. Clubs and bars, if you are young and you like to go out and stay up late and you're really good with people, it's doable. Sugar dating, something that has become weirdly popular over the last years when, you know, successful men who have money, but hey, they have absolutely no game or, or they, they don't know how to approach women in everyday situations and online doesn't work, they kind of turn to sugar dating. Well, there is one problem with that. Seeking arrangement changed its name to simply seeking. It's no longer called seeking arrangement. Why? Because before seeking arrangement and other sites like that were simply viewed by the general population as glorified prostitution. But now these sites and also people who coach what to do on these sites, they've done a lot of work to change the perception on what it actually is. Where in, whereas in reality, in most cases, nothing has really changed. Sure, there is a chance that you will find a decent girl there. Just as when a girl goes to a club and goes home with a fuckboy at 3 a.m., there is a small chance that this dude is actually an amazing guy and they're gonna be in a happy relationship, but both of those things are highly unlikely. So yes, uh, sugar dating and relationships, it is theoretically possible, but in reality, in most cases, it's just not gonna happen. But now let's look at how realistic is it to actually find an interesting, beautiful girlfriend using day game, maybe even finding the holy grail of relationships where you can have some fun with other girls as well. And now let's get to the most important part of this video, the ideal girlfriend math expectations versus what you're willing to put in. Most people want the ideal format. You can bang other girls, she can bang other dudes, and that format is doable. Everything is doable, but is this doable for you? Let's look at the numbers. I have a bunch of models written down, so, you know, let's just go over them. Let's assume you are a pretty decent day gamer. You worked in your game and you have very strong fundamentals. You've found out what parts of day game you are really, really good at. Maybe that's teasing and storytelling. Maybe that's building very deep rapport very fast. A guy like that has put in a lot of work. Most likely he also has had some coaching and is getting a new lay at least once a month. Just like, just like Jim for other people, day game is a big part of his life. Realistically, he should be getting laid with one out of 60 girls he approaches. And we're not even right now talking about top level guys who are getting uh, laid with one out of 30 uh, girls they approach. Just an average good day gamer who has put in enough work. Let's assume that you click enough to consider starting a relationship with one out of five girls you sleep with and we're being very optimistic here. Maybe it's one out of 10, maybe it's, you know, your pickier, maybe it's one out of 20. And then we get to the conversation about the ideal relationship format, the one-sided one, -side, one -sided monogamy. Well, how many of these women that you are thinking, okay, I could be in a relationship with her, how many of them will be ready to have a relationship like that? One out of five? One out of ten? Maybe one out of twenty? This is the trickiest number of them all. Maybe you're already really clicking with the girls you sleep with, you have really good communication skills, and you're able to sort of hint that this is something that you could be looking for even before having a conversation about this, so you're sort of filtering for the right type of the girl. Uh, and you're really good at talking about this to help you both figure out how this could work for both of you. In that case, you should be looking at around one out of five, maybe. Well, but maybe your communication skills aren't that polished and you are looking at one out of 20 or even worse. So let's see how that looks in numbers. Let's start with something very optimistic. We have 30 to one, 
open to lay ratio. That's a very, very good day gamer, day gamer, day gaming in a pretty nice city. He has great communication skills and he's, he's not extremely picky. So let's say he would be considering starting a relationship with five out of, uh, uh, with one out of five girls he sleeps with. And then he's very good at talking about these things. And he, one out of five girls he has this conversation with would agree doing that. Well, then let's, uh, let's look at this. This is 30 times five times five. He has to do 750 approaches to realistically start a relationship like that. And probably he has to do 500 to 1K to get to that level if he's a real day game wunderkind who's learning extremely fast. Now let's look at a bit more realistic scenario. So we have a guy whose open to lay ratio is 60 to 1. So he has to say hi to 60 women to sleep with one of them. And then he would consider starting a relationship with one out of 10 women he approaches. And then he's maybe not that great with talking about these things with women. Because this is, I think, the hardest part is having this conversation. And even if he has, at this case, he would have still good communication skills, but not incredible. And let's say one out of 10 of these women would agree to this relationship format. What do we have here? We have 60 times 10 times 10. That is 6 thousand approaches that is much more than i have ever done and now well let's look at another example let's say he's at 60 to 1 open to lay again he would start with a relationship with one out of 10 uh, with one out of 10 but then only one out of 20 would agree to be in a relationship like that with him and that leads us to 12,000 approaches I would not wish to do that many approaches on anyone. That's just crazy. So what do we learn from this? If you are really, 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 really good at day game and communication, the best case scenario you're looking at is 750 plus however many approaches you need to do to get to that level. That's, you know, at least 500 to 1000. So we're probably looking at 1500 approaches this guy i'm pretty like he's either a wunderkind or he's pretty good and has had coaching so this is very hard to achieve so you have to be very very dedicated you have to be all in and day game to really get to get here doesn't mean it's not doable but you have to be realistic about how much work it will take Unless, of course, you just get lucky and meet the right girl, or unless these numbers are a little bit off and maybe you live in a place where it's easier or your SMB is really high, you're really good looking and you're really good with people and, and you just are so good at communication. I think communication is a big part here. Okay, but now let's talk about what about if you're looking for a traditional relationship, how much easier would that be? Let's say uh, that... Again, you are a 30 to 1, you're a very good day gamer, and then you decide you want a relationship. Well, um, let's say the likelihood that you both would date each other in a traditional relationship is you like her, she likes you, let's say, you know, 1 out of 10. Um, <clears throat> that is only 300 approaches. That is absolutely nothing. But remember, that means you're you're really, really good at day game. You're putting the work, you've gotten to the 30, 30 to 1, and... Uh, but maybe you are a little bit pickier. Maybe your expectations are higher. You know, you don't want the average kind of beautiful girl. You want a really hot one or you're, you're picking in some other, you're picking in some other ways because this is what kind of the dating world or the dating content conditions you to be extremely picky. But again, let's look at how realistic that is. Let's say, but again, we, we assume that let's say your game is maybe we're doing like a worst case, like a not worst case scenario, but like a little bit worse scenario where your game isn't that good. You know, you're at like um, 60 to 1. And then, you know, you're you're pretty picky. So the likelihood you would both date each other is 20 to 1. And even with this, you end up with only 60 times 20. That is 1,200 approaches. That's actually 
not that bad. That is very doable. That is one to two years of serious day game. If you're looking for a traditional relationship with a woman you really like, this is completely doable. This is what most of the students I coach actually want. They want to have one to two years of, you know, fun with plenty of women, improving their skills, and then starting a relationship with a woman they choose a few years down the line. This is actually very doable for a dedicated student, but I'm emphasizing dedicated student, not the average day gamer. Uh, looking at how my past students have been doing, uh, a guy with somewhat decent sexual market value on average looks can get to 60, can get to one layout of 60 approaches. But the important part is to stay at that level up your coaching and keep going, uh, keep working on getting better and better. He has to be dedicated. He has to make day game part of his life. He has to go on day game trips, but uh, let's be honest. He has to obsess and love day game for a year or two. A guy like that can very realistically find his ideal partner within one to two years. Uh, actually, for one of the guys I worked with, his first approach after coaching was his last approach. In his first approach, he met his ideal girl with whom he is in a beautiful relationship. They had a kid a few years ago as well, but he's a bit too big in the business world in this country. So I'm actually very sad I can't have his him tell his story on my podcast. But of course, you have to understand he just happened to run into the right girl. On average, it will take longer. But if you want to go for the holy grail, you will need to get to 1 out of 30. You will have to become one of the best guys out there. This means going deeper than most have ever gone. This means doing what the advanced guys here in the community have done and even more. You will be the guy who other day gamers see approaching all the time in your city. You'll be the guy local guys know as the guy who's getting real results because you will have failed more times than they will have tried. You'll have had more near misses with girls in your apartment than these guys will have had dates. Because you are the real deal, you will easily be able to connect with the best day gamers around the world because you are on their level. But to get there, you'll have to become one of the top guys either because day game really just clicks with you, it just really works, or you have had a lot of help and you need to love it. There's no way you can get there if you don't love going out and approaching women. You have to be the persona people imagine when they think about a great day gamer, just as all the advanced guys in our community are. Now that the numbers have showed you what the reality is, you have to ask yourself, am I willing to go all in in the lifestyle to get what I really want in my life? As you see, it is doable. If you're someone who, you know, has his life more or less in order, is passionate about day game, you're going out, you're approaching, and you're getting at least one lay a month, it is very doable. And if you are if you get to a level, level where you're a good day gamer, it's actually very realistic to do that in six months at most. And now let's look at six questions you should ask yourself if you want to start a relationship from day game. Hey guys, in summary and conclusion of this month's topic, let's talk about six uh, questions you should ask yourself if you want to start a relationship using day game. Partially because I wanted to go quickly over all the things one more time to make sure that everyone understands because there are a few nuances to this topic. And secondly, because some people in the chat commented that, oh my God, it looks like it's going to take so much work, you know, 12,000 approaches and whatnot. I just wanted to clarify that it's not as crazy as you think. So let's go over these six questions. First four of them are rather simple and then you should think more deeply about the last two. Let's start with the first question. What type of a woman do you want to see next to you? Just as we spoke on the first video this month, make sure you have defined what exactly you're looking for so that when you are starting to develop feelings, you're thinking rationally if you're starting a relationship with the right person or you're simply falling in love just because you're spending a lot of time together and maybe this isn't such a good idea. 
Second, what type of relationship format are you looking for and how important it is for you to have that format? So define exactly what it is you want. Question number three, what are the most important things? So what is negotiable and what are musts? What are the things that must exist in these relationships and they're non-negotiable? For example, she's really hot and you really like her, but she's an OnlyFans model. Are you fine with that or no? Or she's beautiful. She's not perfect. She's not, you know, magazine cover. She's not a 10 or whatever, but she's, she's beautiful for you, but she's perfect in all the other ways. Is that fine with you? Or do you want to have a super hot girlfriend? So everyone would look at her when you walk down the street with her, or maybe she's perfect. You know, she's your ideal girl, but she is exclusively looking for a monogamous relationship. Is that something that's okay with you? If you initially wanted to have some different type of format. So think about those things. So you really know your your priorities when you start a relationship and so that when you're having these conversations you know what's important for you and you know where you can um what's a good term compromise and question number four where do you stand in each of five pillars of day game we previously talked about five pillars of day game how learning just technical game isn't probably going to get really really good results technical game is the fund foundations of everything is the most important of the pillars but you need the rest you need to make sure you look as good as possible you need to be able to talk about any topic even if you don't know anything about the topic so in other terms the develop sort of a natural game you need to make sure you are living a full life and you're a positive person and you are day gaming in the right location all five of these are important and if you are lacking in any of them you're simply lowering your chances of achieving your goals and it's important to understand this because you hear success stories from guys who didn't do these things, who just, you know, met the right girl and it happened and it's beautiful and for happily forever after and all of that stuff. But the reality is maybe they just got lucky. So don't let luck be your dating strategy. Question number five, and this is one of the important ones. Given where you are in your day game journey and your day game history, how much work can you expect to put in to get to your goal? When we were looking at the math of starting a relationship, the math of finding a girlfriend, we looked at different examples and how these ratios impact how many approaches on average you have to do. But of course, we looked at some extreme examples. In some examples, I said you should, you will probably have to do 12,000 approaches, but you probably won't do that. And I don't know anyone who has done 12,000 approaches. I'm sure there are some people, but I don't think they are looking for a happily forever after relationship. But if you're looking for a beautiful and interesting girlfriend for a nice relationship, then you probably will have to put in some volume even after you get pretty damn good at day game. It's not going to be just, you know, you talk to 30 girls and you find the one. For some people, that is going to be, you know, maybe 500 approaches total and they find what they're looking for. For others, it might be several thousand. But you have to ask yourself, how long am I going to have to do this? How, how, how many approaches do I think I will have to do to get good at day game? And it really depends on many things. For example, how decent of a looking dude you are. How good are you with people in general? How, what are your social skills like? What was your success? with girls in the past how are you doing with the five pillars of day game are you a fast learner and are you putting in decent volume let's say you're going out three times a week two hours each time and doing at least you know maybe not at least but on average 25 approaches each week the more of the, these things you have going for you the less approaches you will on average need but i just want you to really think about this about your history how you're doing how fast of a learner you are and everything else your sexual market volume you etc etc and set realistic expectations don't let luck be the main factor in your dating strategy and the last question i want you to ask yourself what is more valuable for you time or money if you understand that yes you'll probably need to do quite a bit of approaches then you have then you can simply ask yourself what do i have more to spend on becoming good at day game and reaching my dating goals 
time or money. If you're in your 20s or early 30s and still are trying to make something out of yourself in life, then you probably have a bit more free time on your hands. So you can spend it to become good at day game. You can go out, do a lot of approaches, you know, hundreds and even thousands of approaches, keep working on your, on your game. It is going to take some time, quite a lot of time, but you're going to have fun. You're probably going to be going out on days with beautiful women. Yes, you're, you'll have some wins and you'll have some fails that's fine but you're gonna enjoy your ride but if you are in your late 30s or 40s or older and things are going pretty good in life and you don't really want to spend several years hardcore day gaming you know for years then we'll consider simply getting coaching you'll get pretty decent day game in one to two weeks and it doesn't mean that you know Three days of coaching will make you an incredible day gamer and you will meet your dream girl in three weeks, guaranteed. That's bullshit, obviously. But you will get to a decent level of day game in one to two weeks and then you will just have to keep going out, going on dates, sleeping with these girls, having fun until you find what you're looking for. It's easier, faster, and has a much higher success rate than learning on your own. But this is a question every person has to answer on their own. Do you prefer spending time or does it make more sense to get coaching, spend some money on this, and then have more time to run your own business? Anyway, so the point of this short video was to remind you to go through the thought process of thinking have you done everything necessary to reach your day game goals think about the five pillars of day game have you done everything possible to look as good as you can are you day gaming in the right location how is your sexual market value in general and then when you think about this figure out what are realistic expectations how much work and time you will probably have to put into this just so you are being honest with yourself and then when you are going towards your goals you have a lot of resources available in this private community you have all the content uh, that teaches you pretty much all the theory you could need to get decent at day game to make sure you are seeing your mistakes because a lot of guys even when they have all the content they're not recognizing the mistakes they are making you have the coaching calls for that whether you are doing the group coaching calls or the one-on-one -on -one calls with me both options are good so you have that and if you have any questions about anything that's happened anything that happens in your journey you have the group chat you have the monthly q a's and everything else and i do hope to hear your success story one day and hopefully have you on my podcast when they were where you tell your story how you went from starting day gaming to having a beautiful relationship with the girl you really like and you chose and here you go, the three promised clips. If you want to see the other content we worked on in the private community, especially learn to have these conversations with the girls you're starting to date, especially if you're looking for a more interesting relationship format, then, well, you can join our private community and get access to all of that content by clicking the link in description. That's it for this time. See you in the next podcast episode. Ciao, guys.